It was a lovely garden, the giant's garden. A lovely garden with soft green grass. And every afternoon, children on their way home from school would go and play in it. Birds crowded the trees like rowdy tenants, yet sang so sweetly that the children stopped their games in order to listen to them. Peace reigned, contentment its companion, joy warm as a kitten and as light as dandelion filled the giant's garden from corner to corner, causing the children to say, Return to his castle. He had been away to visit a distant friend, and after only seven years, had said all that he had to say, for his conversation was limited. When he arrived, he saw the children playing in his garden. An inexplicable anger welled up inside of him. What are you doing here? He cried, and the frightened children ran away. What mine is mine! What mine is mine and mine alone! That which I have has been taken from others! Children and difficult mothers, just a few things I can call my own. Taking's not stealing, a child must live in style. That which I possess, I've only borrowed for a little more. This gun is mine. The trees are mine, even birds 
certain peace of mind. But mine is mine. He set about building a high wall round the garden and put up a notice board bearing the words Trespasses will be prosecuted. held out her hand of blessing over the waiting land. As if by magic, little blossoms and little birds appeared everywhere. Everywhere but the garden of the selfish giant. For there it remained winter. I cannot understand why the spring is so late in coming, said the giant. Surely she will soon be here. But the spring never came, nor the summer, nor even the autumn. The only ones who enjoyed it were the snow and the frost. <laughs> One morning, the giant was lying awake in bed when he heard some lovely music. It was only a little bird singing outside his window, but it was so long since he had heard any singing in his garden that it seemed to him to be the most beautiful music in the world. I believe spring has come at last, said the giant, and he jumped out of bed and looked out. A most wonderful sight met his eyes. Through a little hole in the wall, 
The children had crept in and were sitting in the branches of the trees. In every tree that he could see, there was a little child. The trees were so delighted to have the children back again that they waved their arms gently to and fro and covered themselves with blossoms. The birds were flying about and the flyers and the flowers were looking up through the green grass and laughing. Only in the farthest corner it was still winter. A little boy so small that he could not reach up to the branches of the snow-covered tree was wandering all around, crying bitterly. And the giant's heart melted as he looked out. The giant crept downstairs and went quietly into the garden. But the terrified children ran away and the garden became winter again. Only the little boy did not run, for his eyes were too full of tears to see the giant coming. The giant stole up behind him, took him gently in his hand and put him up into the tree. The tree broke at once into blossom. Birds came and sang on it, and the little boy stretched out both his arms, flung them round the giant's neck, and kissed him. And when the other children saw that the giant was not wicked any longer, they came running back, and with them came the spring. That evening, when they came to bid the giant goodbye, he asked them about the little boy. But where is your little companion, the boy I put into the tree?
one who embraced me and kissed me. Embraced me and kissed me. Ask him to come to my garden. The boy, the boy, the boy I put into the tree. How quickly the years passed by. The giant grew old and feeble and was no longer able to join the children in their games. Instead, he sat in his huge armchair and watched them play. I have many beautiful flowers, he said, admiring his garden. But the children are the most beautiful flowers of all. One winter morning, as he was dressing, he looked out of his window. Suddenly, he rubbed his eyes and looked and looked, for in the farthest corner of the garden was a tree quite covered with lovely white blossoms and underneath it stood the little boy he had loved. In a burst of great joy, the giant ran downstairs and into the garden and across the grass. But when he came quite close to the child, his face grew red with anger and he said Who had dared to warn thee? Who had dared, who had dared to do this thing? For on the palms of the child's hands were the imprints of two nails, and the imprints of two nails were on the little feet. Who had dared to wound thee, tell me, that I may take my sword and slay him. And a strange awe fell on the giant, and he knelt before the little child. When the children ran in that afternoon, they found the giant lying dead under the trees, all covered with white blossoms. And as they stood there, 
The sweetest music filled the air and drove the sadness from their hearts. It was only a little bird singing in the tree above them, but it seemed to them to be the most beautiful music in all the world.